Good morning, folks. We'll peek in on the strange land lift in India. We'll hit solar forcing and catastrophism today with an eye towards applying what we've learned. You may be surprised how ahead of the game you are. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were pretty calm. There is both the northern coronal hole enhanced solar wind stream and a tiny bit of a CME three days ago that should be arriving at Earth here early this week all while we continue to monitor the large filaments directly facing Earth the next two days. They are already morphing a bit this morning and do have eruptive potential. Folks, perhaps you saw this video of the land rising in India, and no, this is not good. The kids filming have no idea that this is either methane bubbling the subsurface waterlogged mud or it's volcanic. Either way, bad to breathe, bad to light a fire around, and definitely an extreme version of the phenomenon regardless. It's got mud flood written all over it in a bigger event. Speaking of sediment, let's dive into it here in an excellent high detail study of the last 24,000 years or so. Shows a number of the key events including the Gothenburg and Younger Dryas disaster 12,000 years ago, the Helena Pauli half cycle event 18,000 years ago, and the last glacial maximum and Lake Mungo event 24,000 years ago. Some of the lines even capture what we call the Noah event 6,000 years ago, we call it that simply because it doesn't have a name and literally everybody knows what that means. Up next, folks, this may only be a preprint, but it's under review with the AGU and Leslie Gray does not mess around. Neither does Kuroda. Both cited a few times in our textbook, and this is just more on the control of the NAO by the sun. Here to complement the confirmations of solar control on ENSO we saw just yesterday. Between and through those connections, by the way, there's almost nothing in the world of weather that isn't affected. Now lastly, folks, let's see how keeping up with all the interdisciplinary studies puts you ahead, and we'll do it twice. The oceanic and Heinrich ice events are synchronized. You don't say. For paleo-oceanographers, the question seems it needs an answer, but paleoclimatologists who use astrophysics as well have the edge. As we saw a couple weeks ago in the bombshell paper of the year, the 6,000-year solar Heinrich bond cycle is that which sinks the major polar events and their surrounding oceans. You already knew they were synced. Now let's play that same game here. What? Nova-level isotopes near Earth? Must have been a nearby nova in the past. Veteran observers, pick your jaws of disbelief up off the floor. And yes, the 37th International Cosmic Ray Conference got their first taste of recent nearby nova evidence just this past week. Of course, they are way behind because the other isotopes tell us it wasn't a supernova and it's a recurring event from the sun. And by the way, this evidence is more than two decades old. But before we chuckle at their being literally years behind most of astronomy on this topic, they have also updated the interstellar iron content and report unexpected signatures and ratios. Folks, they try to explain why previous studies missed it, but perhaps the best reason is that it simply wasn't there in this abundance before. The interstellar medium should be changing rapidly as the core portion of the galactic current sheet crosses our system, triggering the zenith of the magnetic events unfolding now from Pluto to the Sun. We greatly appreciate your support. The cycle, the recent nearby nova, the reasons it must actually be the Sun. Yep, all in that disaster playlist below the video I beg you guys to watch all the time. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now at 6 a.m. in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone